Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're going to be making self-portraits with photography. A self-portrait is a great way of communicating something about yourself to someone. Maybe something specific like how you like to wear your glasses, or it might say something about a favorite object of yours, like a keychain or a book that you love that a close friend gave to you. Or it might say something about your personality, how you move and interact with the world around you. It might also express something you believe in or how you see yourself. Today, when you're making a self-portrait, you can use any kind of camera that you happen to have, a cell phone or a tablet or a regular camera. We'll be imagining different ways of representing yourself in a self-portrait that expresses something about you or tells a story about you. For me, photographs are a little bit like written notes. They refer to something you see, but also to how you think. This picture that you see here doesn't just show you what I look like. It's the result of a whole bunch of choices I made. The framing of my head and my glasses, the light behind me, the window, and the blue sky above me. So it sometimes helps me to write down a few words or phrases that interest me before I start photographing, like a list of objects that mean something to me. Or a list of places where I really fit in. You could also think of this writing as a kind of script for the photographs you make. You could write about things like how do you fit in with your family or with a group of friends? What kinds of things do you think about? What do you like? What makes you happy or sad? Who are you as the person that everybody sees? Who is the you that nobody sees? So if you want, pause the video now, go get a piece of paper and a pencil and write down a few things about yourself that you think might be important to include in your self-portrait. As we're practicing self-portraits today, I want you to think about something really important, and that is framing. We see frames everywhere. We see windows, door frames, television and digital device frames, screens, they create a visual dimension that you look through. Now, you're so used to looking through frames all the time, but you might never have really thought about it or knew about it at all. When you're working on a self-portrait, you need to be very aware of what your frame is, how you're framing your picture, because it determines what's in your picture and the range of things that you include in your frame, your eyes, nose, mouth, and hat, maybe with your sister in the background. All these elements contribute to what you're communicating about yourself. And it's important to remember that you can include everything in your self-portrait. So at first, try to keep it simple and be sure to think about what's next to you, what's above you, and what's behind you. If you've written down a list of objects or places that are important to you, Think about how you might include them in your self-portrait. With objects, the way you photograph them or pose with them can strengthen their meaning in a photograph. With this deer antler, if I just hold it next to me, it doesn't connect with my character in the picture as much as if I put it on my head and make it a part of me. Remember that what you communicate to others through your self-portrait is determined by lots of things, like the expression of your face, the clothes you wear, or whatever else might be on your body, the location and lighting where you make your portrait, and the gesture of your body, which is how basically how a movement that you make takes on meaning for the viewer. You could think of these hand gestures as part of an alphabet. Your viewer will read them as if they're letters in a word. When you're thinking about where to make a photograph, think about how putting yourself in that place will affect the meaning of that picture. 
In this image, without a human figure, a viewer might be prompted to think about how the trees feel because of how the bark looks, scaly and thick, or of how the place smells like pine needles. But as soon as a human form enters the picture, a viewer's looking takes the form of hiding and the trees exist in the picture as a way to accentuate a human characteristic or desire. I see a forest, I want to run and hide. In this shot, you could also focus on movement. I might do a self-portrait that frames only my legs or my feet. When I go for walks in the woods, I like to pretend I'm going there for the first time, and I look for things I haven't seen before, like trees or rocks, or the way the trail curves. I might intentionally move my camera so that the photograph is blurred, which might give the viewer the impression that I'm lost or confused about where to go. One of the things I think that's so great about a self-portrait is its ability to convey a kind of mystery. And I think this has something to do with the frame. A photograph can sometimes feel like a quotation or a drawing but we all know that a photograph is taken from real life, from something that was actually seen. Oftentimes, the framing of that picture makes me wonder, what's outside of that frame? What's going on in that picture that you can't see because of the way it's framed? Is there a person just outside of the frame who's influencing the subject's expression? It's also important to think about how you're gonna make your self-portrait. Who's gonna hold the camera? Do you have a tripod? If you hold it yourself, you'll have a limited range of perspectives to choose from. They'll extend only as far away as you can hold your camera with your own hand. Another option is using a tripod. You can set the shot up, set your camera up on a tripod and make the picture that way. Or you could ask someone else to take the picture for you. Again, you can set the shot up, establish what's going on in the frame, the perspective, which is where the camera is in relation to you, the subject, what objects are in the frame, what part of you, if any, how the shot's gonna be composed, what kinds of light or shadows will be present, and then ask someone to stand where you direct them and take the shot. For those of you who are looking for a deeper challenge in making a self-portrait, think about ways to photograph something that you haven't actually seen. How will you look in five years? What part of you is something that people don't normally see? What character in a book or movie has something that you identify with? How would you compose yourself to look like that character? Through practicing making photographs, you'll discover how different visual qualities that you include in your images communicate specific things to those you show your pictures to.